Welcome back to Flying S Models, and thanks again for tuning into the channel. In this episode, we're going to be doing a full build of the 148th Hobbycraft F8F1 Bearcat. But before we start, I wanted to thank all the current subscribers. We passed the first milestone last week, hitting 1,000 subscribers. I really appreciate all of the support so far, and if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing that. To celebrate that milestone, I'm going to be giving away this 148th Bearcat to one lucky subscriber. Here's how I'll work this giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe and leave me a comment, and then I'll pick at random one of the individuals based on their comment and send you the model. I'll pick the winner on August 4th and pin a post in the comments section here, as well as over on my Facebook page at Facebook forward slash Flying S Models. I'll get your shipping address either through the Facebook Messenger or through my website contact info at flyingsmodels.com. So make sure to subscribe, comment, and share the video. Before we get rolling with the build, Let's take a quick look at the kit. The box art is pretty nice and depicts a French Indochina Bearcat. The instructions are well illustrated and straightforward. There are callouts for paint colors and drawings that show the markings and decal placement. The kit parts are well molded and it's a pretty simple kit overall. It has fine surface detail including recessed panel lines and restrained rivet detail. The cockpit and forward bay areas are pretty simplified, but we'll be doing a little extra work to dress up the office area. There are a couple of areas on the kit that need to be addressed. The first one is a way oversimplified Pratt & Whitney R2800 engine. I used a replacement resin one from Quick Boost. It's a major improvement over the kit parts, as you can see. The wheel bays are also pretty simplified, but they'll look more than adequate once they are painted and weathered. The prop and landing gear are decent enough and the main wheels are flattened to depict the aircraft under load. There's a small sprue that contains the parts for the Dash 1B version of the Bearcat that includes the cannon blisters and the cannons themselves. The second and bigger problem area of the kit is the cowl. The shape is way off with the forward cowl ring being boxy rather than curved as it should be. A quick comparison to some scale drawings highlights exactly how bad it is. We'll certainly be taking care of that problem area at the start of the construction. The clear parts are pretty thick, but they are nice and clear. The decal sheet included with the kit has good color and register, but I think the Indochina markings are a little boring. I wanted to do something colorful and unique, and as far as Bearcats go, they don't get much more colorful than those used by the Royal Thai Air Force. I had an illustration that came with some 172nd decals for the Royal Thai aircraft that I wanted to model, but unfortunately I couldn't find any decals for this particular aircraft in 148th scale. So to create the markings, I use my silhouette cutter to cut custom masks. You can find more detail on the process I used to create these masks in a previous video that I have up here on the channel. For the Bearcat, I imported an image for the bull, insignias, and eagle on the tail. I traced them and cleaned up those tracings using the embedded features in the silhouette design software. The first step in the build was to fix that forward cowl ring. I used various grits of sanding pads and some sandpaper to rough it to shape and then polish the plastic. I added a little Tamiya tape to cover the cowl ring panel lines so I didn't sand those away during the process. It's a quick and easy job and the results are well worth it and make for a far more accurate model. The next step was to address some of the deficiencies in the cockpit. While the main cockpit tub and the instrument panel are adequate, the fuselage sidewalls are devoid of any details. Using some online references I found, I marked out the locations for various panels, gauges, formers, and stringers. The seat is decent but lacks the shoulder harnesses and lap belts. 
I carved out a slot in the rear cockpit bulkhead for the harnesses to go through and added those using pewter foil and silver wire. I have a video already loaded up on the channel that provides a step-by-step -step process on how to do that. I made the flap actuation lever and all the other cockpit sidewall details using various bits of evergreen plastic rod and strip. I also made an oxygen hose using 15,000 solder wire. It's the same wire I used for the buckles. There's a short video on that technique that I loaded up on the channel as well, so make sure to check all those out later. I fit checked the cockpit tub with the fuselage sides to make sure everything fit well after adding the scratch built details. Per my usual process, I start the cockpit painting by laying down a base coat of Tamiya Flat Black. This helps add some dimension to the finish when I come back over it with Interior Green. The Interior Green is a custom mix using Tamiya Flat Green and Yellow Green mixed at a 1 to 1 ratio. Next, I come back in with an oil wash made from lamp black and raw umber and highly thinned with mineral spirits. This flows along the crevices to add some shadowing and highlight the raised details. The wheel bays were painted with Tamiya Dark Sea Blue, and although I initially painted the tailwheel gear bay in interior green, I did come back later and spray it with the Dark Sea Blue as well. After the oil wash had dried, I came back with a lighter shade of interior green made by adjusting the mix ratio to add more of the Tamiya yellow green. This helps to add a little dimension and lightens things up so that they are a little more visible when the fuselage is closed up. To add even more detail, I mixed a lighter interior green shade using Vallejo's Russian Uniform Green, Flat Yellow, and White, and painted the raised details on the cockpit sidewalls. I painted the headrest and all the consoles using Vallejo Black. I then came back and lightened it up with a little khaki and painted various console sections to add just a little visual interest. The harnesses and belts were also painted with Vallejo paints and I used a little chrome to paint the buckles. Using gray and white, I picked out various knobs and switches on the side consoles. I brush painted the instrument gauges using Vallejo white and a fine tip brush. Using white spirits as a base coat and raw umber and white oil paint straight from the tube, I applied a little additional weathering to the cockpit parts.
I applied a little five minute epoxy using a toothpick to each instrument gauge to represent the bezels. With the cockpit parts complete, I could install the tub and close up the fuselage halves. I added the horizontal stabilizers as well as the separate Dash 1 tail. Overall, the fit is really good and I didn't need to use any filler on these joints. Before building up and installing the wings, Make sure to drill out the ports for the blisters and pylons and then install the belly tub. The top and bottom wing joint is also good and doesn't require any filler. The wing section snaps into place on the fuselage and the only area that needed to be addressed was the rear wing section to fuselage joint. Just a little filler and some sanding was all that was required. I used the cowl as a clamp to press the fuselage halves in place while the glue dried. I sanded all the seams smooth using various sanding pads and sticks prior to painting the airframe. I painted the entire model using Tamiya's Dark Sea Blue. With the base color down, I came back in with thin coats of Tamiya Field Blue and lightened Field Blue using Tamiya Medium Blue. This was to add some post shading to various panels on the airframe.
To paint the checkerboard tail, I cut squares from Tamiya tape and laid them down in an alternating pattern according to my references. Once masked off, I sprayed a coat of Tamiya flat white over the checkerboard pattern. The mask can be removed to show the very convincing results. I cut the custom markings using my Silhouette Cameo 3 cutter and Oracle low tack masking material. You can find links to those products as well as the other products used during this build in the video description below. I applied all of the masks individually and sprayed them using Tamiya white, red, and yellow. I was a little worried that my Cameo cutter wouldn't be able to cut some of the really fine details on the bull and eagle so I didn't draw those on the masks, but instead, I just hand painted those with a fine tip brush. After painting the cowling in the same method I had used for the fuselage, I gloss coated everything using AK's Gauzy Gloss Coat in prep for applying the panel line washes. For the panel line wash, I used AK's wash specifically for dark or black camouflages. It was applied to all the panel lines and rivets and once dry, wiped with a clean paper towel moistened with a little mineral spirits.
I had initially scaled the cow numerals wrong, so I had to adjust those and cut new ones prior to airbrushing them onto the sides of the cow. The landing gear and wheels were installed using Tamiya Thin Cement. Make sure to check the position of the main wheels since they do have a built-in flat spot. Now the quick boost engine is really nice, but it's not so much of a quick boost given the fact that it lacks the valve lifter rods. I used evergreen rod cut to length and added those using super glue applied with a stretch sprue applicator. The windscreen and canopy were masked and sprayed, first with a base coat of interior green followed by the main airframe color. This allows the interior of these parts to show the green when viewed from the inside. To get a satin type finish, I sprayed a matte coat on the entire model and then came back in with a very light coat of that AK Gauzy to give it a satin look. The windscreen and canopy were unmasked and installed. I created new formation lights using pewter foil and 5-minute epoxy. When dry, I painted those with a little Tamiya clear blue and installed them on the top and bottom wing locations. That's another tip that you can find a full how-to video up here on the channel. The engine was detailed using various Vallejo shades and installed on the Ford bulkhead and then the cowl was added. I completed the model by adding a small whip antenna on the rear spine and adding an antenna wire using Easy Line. The Hobbycraft Bearcat is a straightforward build and goes together without any issues. There are a couple shortfalls with the kit, but I showed you how to address those in this full video build. Remember, I'm giving this model away in August to one of my subscribers to celebrate that 1,000 sub milestone. Make sure to subscribe and comment for your chance to win it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video build. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll know when I post the next video up here on the Flying S Models channel. Thanks for checking it out and have a good one.